Welcome to Alpha Val Cambly. This is a site that's been here for 50 years. It's over 5,000 square metres. The facility is a class in the advanced service centre and I'd like to give you a tour around our facility. Come with me. So part of being an advanced service centre, we do three of the main products from Alpha Laval, the decanter, high-speed separator and plate heat exchanger. This is our high-speed separation department where we can fully strip, clean, inspect, rebuild, test, do all necessary machining as well in this area in one stage. So we go from some of the smaller, some of the marine stuff, to some of the bigger stuff that's out into the brew. And some of these, some of the bigger stuff that we've got down here, is almost as old as me, or even older than me in some cases, and we can still bring it back to the way it was first created. We do our own inspection here. Once we've had the cleaning done, it's been stripped, been cleaned. We do our inspection here. IT has been rolled out onto our shop floor so we can access all our systems. We can get all the drawings necessary to make sure that we can put things back the way they were. We do a certain amount of machining in this area. We have some machines set up purely just for these products themselves. When we do our final assembly and our testing, we have to remove weight for balance. These things spin five, 6,000 revs. They need to be balanced. So we will use milling machines dedicated just to remove that weight. And around here is the final test facility for this. Once the machine's been built, finally tested, we put it onto our machine here. We can then run it to its operating speed. We can check it for vibration. Uh, and we can check how many grams, millimetres it might be out as well to make sure that everything is as it should be. So when it goes back to our customers, it's exactly as it should be. We can do our own balancing of independent parts here as well. So we've got a very large machine shop here at Cambly. Also, we have our own welding shop here. I have three bays here, coping with all the repairs throughout our shop. So we can do MIG welding, TIG welding, MMA, silver soldering, brazing, we can do powder spraying, pretty much anything we can stick together or repair. In here we've got several lathes, we've got grinders, we've got horizontal borers, CNC machines as well. Here is where we can finish grind our final diameters back to their original size, back to the drawing specification. Some things, as they get worn, the diameters get very, very worn down, we can repair them with either welding or hard chrome plating. If they're hard chromed, we can grind them. We've just had some nice investment in our building here. We have this lovely CNC grinder. We can put things back exactly the way they should be. So down into the machine shop, as I said, we've got a lot of manual machines as well. We've got an eight meter lathe here. The fact the job that's on here at the moment doesn't do, do it justice. Alpha Laval is all about safety. We don't want the welders exposed to their vibration grinding tools. So we will use machines to do that, to save the hand. So at this end of our machine shop, the CNC machines, as you're just about to see, make up these parts. Around here, we have a CNC milling machine, CNC lathe at the moment, manufacturing parts, and a partially CNC orientated vertical borer. So this can not only turn metal, it can also grind metal. So we can do the repairs on here, as well as the new parts as well. And over here is a good indication of some of the parts that are created here. We have a finished machined hub and the casting that it comes from. And even though it's parts manufacturing and this is the main part of the building for that, some operations require the other machines in the machine shop. It just flows through nicely and we get them done. Here in the smaller part of the machine shop, dealing with the smaller conveyors. So as I said, these machines can be really, really, really big and really, really small. This is one of the smaller ones. So just like with Gary round there with the large horizontal borer, we've got two small horizontal borers here as well to cope with the demand. Because it's all about that demand to keep those machines running. They need to keep that going. We do have a section devoted purely to gearboxes for decanters. Because of the fine art that's involved in the gearbox, we don't want dirt, mess and rubbish in them. We have a clean room here for building just the gearboxes. And we have a balancing room next door to balance the stages and the cages and also the main outer shelves. 
So we leave the machine shop now, we go off into the decanter fitting shop. So in the decanter fitting section, I have two bays devoted to decanter fitting. From the stripping bay right at the start, so when these machines come in for either a service or they're damaged, destroyed, whatever the case might be, we get them in here, we pull them apart, take every single bit and piece apart. And as our fitters take them apart, we tend to gather as much history as we can as well. So our fitters will look at why it failed, if it did fail, what was the potential cause of that, so we can gather all this information and make best use of that when we're doing our final inspection. Once they're stripped in this area, they go out for chemical cleaning. I have some chemical tanks outside, caustics and acids. All the cleaning gets taken care of out there. I have a devoted cleaner that gets out there. Everything is absolutely pristine by the time he's finished. After it's been cleaned, comes back into inspection over here. All the parts are then thoroughly inspected so we can get an inspection report done through to my office and therefore we can create quotes for our customers. And as with Graham, he's taking photos of bits and pieces as we go as well to gather that history. Once it's here and it's in the building, it's normalised because it can be really hot outside, really cold outside. We then take it into inspection. Here you can see Nigel, my inspector, working away. And as I said, every single component part gets checked. Nigel will do a full report back to me so that I know what needs changing, what needs repairing, what needs altering. Once parts are stripped, and I've got the go ahead, before the initial assembly of these, we have to make sure everything is balanced. Because anything that's gonna go around and around and around, especially the speed that these machines go, they need to be balanced. And we've just had a lovely piece of Italian equipment here, this Chem Balancer. We have to, to balance our parts, to balance our bowls and our conveyors. It's a very accurate piece of machinery. It does its job very, very well. We're doing a bit of an upgrade at the moment, We're re-guarding our old equipment, as you saw in the machine shop around there, where we've been guarding some of our old machines. A couple of hours, very, very safety conscious. We are not only doing that in this area as we did in that area as well, right, to make sure that our guys go home at the end of the day. When you go to work, you shouldn't be at risk. Once everything's balanced, it's been passed, as Steve's doing on here, it will then go through for that final assembly. And then when I come to test run it, or my cell leader comes to test run it at the end, we know that it's the best thing it could be. In this fitting bay here, the work gets a bit cleaner from here on in. So once I've had the go ahead from our customers, we start putting everything back together. Even in this section, we deal with a lot of all brand stuff, or what we call all brand, which is our competitor's equipment. Uh, because of our uh, knowledge and our experience in this building, we can do our competitors' equipment. We know what a decanter looks like, so even if it's not one of ours, we can still strip it down and uh, we can put their machines right as well, which we are doing right here at the moment. In this bay as well, we also have our own test facilities. We have one this side for our oil fields bearings on our older Sharples machines, the larger Sharples machines, and even a new test rig at the end there to do all of our Alpha Val rotors. So it's a good thing to be able to not only build our rotors at the end, but be able to test them, test them for vibration and how they run so that we can report to our customers and tell them exactly how good the machine was and that it's going to run on without a problem. We have our own paint and booth at the end there. So not only once we've finished doing what we do to our machines or the customers' equipment in this case, we can make it look brand new again. So we'll go from here and we'll go off towards PHE, shall we? And here we are in plate heat exchangers, where I can now hand you over to my colleague David Jones. He's a workshop manager for this area. He'll take you on the tour from here on in. Brilliant. Thanks, John. OK, come this way. We'll show you the first area. So this is our testing area. We can test all of our heat exchanger frames here. Everything from the T2, which is our smallest, at about 30 centimetres, all the way up to our T35, which is about three metres. The plates uh, are put into frames and we close them together after they've all been um, fully refurbished and then we can test them to make sure they're fit to go back to the customer site. Okay, so if we go through to our next section which we'll remove the gaskets in our liquid nitrogen bar. Follow me. So this is our liquid nitrogen bar. Uh, what we'll do, the plates come in, they'll have glued gaskets on the plates so we need to remove the gaskets. So the guys will hang them up here on the rack and then go into the liquid nitrogen bar. As they go into the liquid nitrogen bar, the plates are cooled down. They're cooled down to around minus 200 degrees Celsius. Once the plates have all cooled down, they come back out of the machine and as they warm back up, the gaskets are debond 
they come out and then we can remove the gaskets and the plates then are ready for processing at the next part. So if you follow me, we'll go to our cleaning bar. So this is our Octoplex cleaning tanks. We've just had these put in. Um, what's happening here is the guys are loading up the chemical racks. These are our dirty plates. They're being loaded up so they then go into the chemical baths where they'll be processed to clean in. So we have four tanks here. We have an acid tank, a caustic tank and two water rinse tanks. Both the acid and caustic tanks, we're using ultrasonics to clean the plates. This is absolutely brilliant because it's speeded up our cleaning time. We're about 70% quicker cleaning time than we was with the old tanks. Uh, we're also a bit more environmentally friendly. We're able to use a lot less cleaning chemicals. So currently it's 40% less cleaning chemicals than we was previously. So that's major value for us. And uh, let's go on to the next section. Okay, so this is our NDT area. So it's really important we do the NDT inspection. We're looking for any cracks or defects in the plate. Any defects would mean that the uh, fluids of the heat exchanger mix, which is not good. So we have our spray booth here, and on the spray booth, what we'll do is we'll spray one side of the plate with a coloured dye, and then we'll pop it onto the table. It will develop for about an hour, and once it's been developed, we'll move over to inspect it, which is over here in our uh, dark room area. So in the dark room, we have some UV lighting, and when the uh, curtains are closed, what you'll see is the plates contrast. You'll get a purpley colour on one side of the plate. The other side, you'll see the dye, which is the, the green side and we're looking for any defects. So if the green comes through onto the purple side, we have a cracked plate and it's no good, we put it away, we quarantine it. We then wash the dye off and the next stage is we have to fit the gaskets. So if you follow me this way. Okay, so this is gonna be the final part of our process. So what we need to do is we need to fit the gaskets to the plate. So we're gonna put a two part epoxy resin onto the plate. Then we're gonna put the gaskets on top. We we'll use these jigs here to sandwich the plates and then we'll put them into the ovens where they're cured for about three or four hours at 180 degrees Celsius. Once they come out of the curing ovens, we've got here is the guys that are doing their final inspections. They're checking the gaskets that are cooled, they're bonded properly to the plates, then all in the channel and there's no excess adhesive. Once that's happened, we'll do our final quality checks, which will include the pressure testing that you saw at the start of the process, and they're packed up and then they're sent back to the customers. So that pretty much concludes our tour. Thank you for joining us. This has been out of the old Cambly Service Centre. Hi guys, how's it going? Plates looking good? Good, good.